Thank you, Robert, and thank you to Medifacos for inviting me to this very interesting symposium. And the topic is to make a, a, a critic uh, overview about what we are doing with intracoronal CMS segments and why we are in a stage in which we need to make a step forward to our better method. These are my relevant disclosures this year at this meeting. And we know by the experience and by literature and by our own practice that predictability of intracoronal rings and segments either from the visual, refractive, or topographical perspective is still an issue. We have, in spite of the many peer review reports, great variability of outcomes, and opinions still exist that are in controversy about many of the issues as well. And reports are below usually based on the small series, and there is, there is not a large group of patients in a systematic way approach from the diagnosis and the therapeutic perspective that really tell us what we are getting in terms of demography. So this is why some years ago we created the RETICS, which is an acronym of our network of clinical resources that we have created in Spain. And this is, a, we have created the Iberia Keratoconus database that gathers the information about Keratoconus and intracoronal ruins for the centers that you can see here in the image. And indeed, as far as we know, it's the first network dealing with Keratoconus that's been created so far. The aim of this database is to identify the variables involved in the characterization of keratoconus, involved in the diagnosis and uh, 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 grading of keratoconus, to study the outcomes obtained with novel therapeutic corneoplastic procedures in keratoconus, and through to propose new therapeutic algorithms for the indication of intracoronal rings and segments and other methods in the correction of keratoconus in order to improve visual function, because what matters in this perspective is that the patient needs to be with a better vision at the end. So in the database, we have 77 176 sites of 507 patients up to June 2011. So this number is increased now, but we have taken all these cases up to this moment. These are the cases that are involved in this database as far as the results that I am reporting to you. And this is the, the base of the reports that I am going to form to you that have been either published or in the way of being published by accepted publications. So we have developed and I am avoiding a lot of uh, analysis that we did, which are the variables involved in the in keratoconus in terms of vision. In other words, in other words which are the factors in, uh, in modern exams that we do in keratoconus that really have a relationship with the poor vision or the good vision of the patient. And the variables that are significantly related are the mean keratometry of the patient, the internal astigmatism, which is the difference between the keratom the anterior contra surface and the, tot and the total, the, re the, re the, uh, the coma-like aberrations uh, root mean square, and the Q value at 8 millimeters. These values predicts how is the patient vision in keratoconus and will predict how is the outcome of everything that we put in order to improve the vision of these patients. And based on this, uh, on this data, in these uh, var variables, we have created a new classification that is not only about keratometry, is not only about pachymetry is about vision, about how these, these, these different variables are related to the vision of the patient. Group 1 keratoconus are those patients with up to, that are uh, up to more than 0.9 vision, which is really excellent, almost normal vision, with a keratometry which is less than 46.5. Internal estimation less to 2.5, RMS of coma-like abrasions less than 2.5, and a Q, Q value at 8 millimeters less than minus 0.35. This is a grade one keratoconus. So in other words, you can have a keratoconus with a normal cornea thickness, and but it's a keratoconus according with this information. About grade two is corrected for distance visual acuity and token corrected with, uh, for distance with glasses between 0.9 and 0.6. Mean keratometry between 46.5 and 49. Internal estimation between 2.5 and 3.70, comma like aberrations room in the square between 2.5 and 3.5 microns, and Q value between uh, up minus 0.35 and minus 0.75. Grid three. Corrected for addition between 0.6 and 0.4, a keratometry between 49 and 53, internal estimation between 3.5 and 4.5, comma like aberrations between 3.5 and 4.5, and Q value between, between minus 0.75 and minus 1.10. These are very steep cases that could have, even in, in that they are not frequent, even a borderline a pachymetry, but they are keratoconus. Grid 4 are corrected for addition in visual acuity between 0.4 and 0.2. Mean key value 53 to 57. Internal estimation between 4.5 and 5.5. Comma like operation between 4.5 and 5.5. And Q value between minus 1.10 and minus 1.50. 
And we have a great plus in which it's agreed for, but with corneal opacities. These corneal opacities prevent an adequate analysis of corneal topography, and this is the grading system that we use. And this grading system has been published in Unicatra Refractive Surgery, and you have access to this information in a much more larger scale and indeed in a much better and more better explained method. So uh, this is a better approach because it has been developed from a large number of patients. For instance, Amsler's classification was based in 50 cases and with different degrees of keratoconus. Second, is based on the correlations with clinical and examination variables associated to which and function in keratoconus. Corneal aberrations are used in order to determine the degree of asymmetry from the corneal surface and the corneal optical quality. Never before, only one paper that we did some years ago, we used corneal aberrations come up precisely to, to characterize the degree of keratoconus. This is a much wider and more much ambitious classification and analysis of corneal sphericity. 100 millimeters will allow to estimate the geometry of the cornea for the first time in a significant area, not only at the center of three millimeters, what happens to be with keratometry. And this is the main issues that we, that we have. And this classification should allow us to provide a better therapeutic approach to the patient, taking into account the level of visual impairment that exists in this case and why this impro the impairment has happened. This is the paper. Go to your Carter Refractive Story, and you will, will find how we built up this classification, how it's created, and how it is used at this moment. So, if we use this classification, do we gain knowledge in how to treat, or do we, go, we gain knowledge in how to classify? Let me tell you that we have uh, used this, uh, this classification in 563 eyes, in which we have a, a, a indication for intact, scalar range, and my range. So basically, we have an, a, an all types of, of devices that are implanted in the cornea. Uh, the cases were uniform in indication in 304. That means that they follow the same indication with the same axis for the, the incision and other variables. And uh, indeed, uh, they are reliable at this regard. Be among this, we have one distinguished group, which is what the 114 eyes that were uh, operated by the same sodium with the same nomogram, all with femtosecond laser, with the same femtosecond parameters, and only with Kerarin Ferrara. So this best case group is the e excellent group to be compared with the others. And what happened in this best group? First of all, the outcomes were identical to the general group. It's amazing that in, even with the sophistication introduced by this the femtosecond technology, we got the same degrees of, of failure, and, and we have to see that this is the distribution of cases according with the, our classification. We have defined for the first time in the literature what is success. And for us, success is to gain one more, more line of best corrector for distance visual acuity, to decrease two or more diodes in the spherical equivalent, to gain one or more lines of uncorrected distance visual acuity, to decrease in one micron at least of, of high order aberrations, and to decrease in one micron comma-like aberrations. This is the definition of success, first time performed in literature, and look what happened when you, we considered the classification and what we defined success in the best group. Uncorrected for distance visual acuity, as you see, we have that we uh, improve in 100% of grade 1, 44% grade 2, 72% grade 3, 50% grade 4, 50% grade plus. That means that we have a refractive outcome that is favorable in grade 1 and less favorable with the progression of keratoconus. But look what happens when we take the best rated for distance. We had success only in 17%, so only 17 improved vision, 56% grade 2, 47% grade 3, 77% grade 4, and grade plus 80% of the cases gain vision. That means that it behaves in the opposite to the refraction. We have a refractive procedure in, in, in early keratoconus. We have a therapeutic procedure that gains vision, promotes an improvement in vision, best quality vision. And what about coma like? We were um, happy in 50% of the cases improving high grade order aberrations, only 17% in grade uh, 2, 32% in grade uh, 3, grade 4, 13%, no case in grade plus improve the uh, coma-like aberration. So we have a disparity of the success as defined by the variables. What about failure? We define failure if we have lost one or more lines of best corrected for distance vision and increasing two or more diopters of a spherical equivalent, loss of one or more lines of non corrected for distance visual equity, and increasing one micron root mean square of high grade aberrations or one micron in comma like aberration. What happens here? Failure never happened. Taking into consideration uncorrected vision in grade one, 
44% grade 2, 16% grade 3, 25% grade 4, and no case in grade plus. But if we consider the best grader for this transmission, a failure happening in 5% of grade 1, 34% in grade 2, 26% in grade 3, 22% in grade 4, and in no case of grade plus. So failure is behaving much more in favor of, of, the, of the grade plus and the uh, severe cases of keratoconus. The other uh, results were not as significant, and uh, we had in the best case, case group about the same variables. Look here, when we are dwelling about the spherical equivalent, we had no significant difference in grade uh, 1 in 71%. Simply talking, grade 1 did not benefit at all. Did neither improve nor nor, nor uh, worsen. Grade uh, two, 31 percent, 40 percent grade three, 12 percent grade four, and 71 percent grade plus. So this is uh, the, the evidence that no significant benefit was obtained from the surgery in such a high number of cases. And if we take into consideration the root mean square of the of the comma like 50 percent, 75 percent, 46 percent, 74 percent, and 100 percent of the cases did not obtain significant benefit. So think about what we have been. Uh, uh, showing because we are not, we should not be happy. Just imagine that you are face cataract surgery or the correction of with examiner laser of myopia with this percentage. Nobody would have the surgery. We all have a procedure that is effective where we are not using properly, and of course we have uh, the, to show the reason why. We have the, starting to develop our own predictive model, and we have uh, manufactured created this model about uh, the topics that we have explained to you. And I'm not going to go into the details, but these are the variables that are involved and predicted the outcome. Let me go a little bit further into this. We have worse outcome in high cylinders. We have worse outcome in very poor biomechanics. We have worse negative impact by very significantly high spherical aberration. We have primary coma as a factor that works and, uh, uh, against the outcome, and probably the comatic axis should guide our procedure in some cases. And finally, we have the coronal hydrate or aberration, uh, excluding coma and spherical aberration, and indeed, as an important factor in this coefficient. So these variables are involved, and we have never considered them as well related to the outcomes of the intracoronal rings and segment implantation. So in summary, and you can imagine that this is a very broad study, probably many questions will be left to you, but the message is we have a better classification that allows a much better com and complete knowledge about the disease, and probably it will be in the benefit of the definition of how to treat. Intracoronal renal segments are unprecise in outcomes in spite of the present numbers that we have and in spite of the anecdotical uh, uh, improvements that we get. Predictive models on large number of cases are the best method to reach a better indication and indeed we have a conclusion. New rings and new segments models are necessary for keratoconus surgery. We should not be happy with what we do. We are happy because we had nothing to do before but now we need to do a better job. New numbers based on wider perspective of keratoconus disease not only in keratometry but based on vision and the variables that influence the visual performance are mandatory, and predictive models for the visual outcomes of catacondos need to be developed in order to guide our indication for this case. And I thank you very much for your kind attention.